Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Often the people that come to Nema have been rejected by their families and rejected by society and they're now in a place where they're accepted and there is a loving family there that care for one another. So the founders of the project were Susie and Andy Hart, um, CMS Mission Partners, and they set up the project in 2003 along with the Diocese of Ruaha, who'd identified a real need within the disabled uh, community and now Neymar Crafts employs over 100 people. It's about taking people that have been downcast and saying you are not defined by your disability, you're defined by your ability and that God's got a purpose for your life. Nineteen eleven, the first Anglican missionaries arrived in northern Argentina, relationships between the, the indigenous Amerindians and the white settlers was at an all-time low and the missionaries that had stood in the way and literally protected the Amerindians and missions were established along the two major rivers. Today in Argentina the Amerindian is no longer a second-class citizen and they would they would say that is largely down to the gospel and the mission as well although there's obviously been lots of other factors over the years. One of the major things has been translating the scriptures into three of the five languages that are spoken in the diocese. You can see the effects in the church when the Bible is used in people's own tongue. We have a need to train new leaders. Several mission partners are involved in training and discipleship in that area, and that's an area that we desperately need to get sorted in order to have leaders tomorrow. Statistically, is in the top probably 5% of most deprived areas in the country. What felt different here was it just seemed really broken. For us, our role is to bring Jesus into a situation where there was no hope and where he brings hope that's long lasting. We started the Breakfast Club partly to see the children every day of the week. We also wanted to be able to give them a good breakfast. A lot of children go without breakfast altogether. We also wanted it to be a place where the parents could come as well. It was a, a place where we could, uh, you know, play games, help them with their reading and all those sorts of things. So we started off with eight children in 1999. <laughs> and then it's just grown and grown from there. When we allow God to be in control, then I think that's when we, we, see, we see all this transformation, we see change. So I guess the dream is that, you know, that this community wouldn't be deprived, <laughs> at least not of God. I would say 99% of the prisoners uh, come from Hindu uh, background. So I relate the perfect sacrifice that Lord Jesus has given to us. It relates very well with Hindu context and they have become Christian. So I see there are a lot of transformation taking place. We have a, a leadership group within the uh, prison and those prisoners who are working as pastors and leaders they are the ones who have a worship fellowship and they pray together and they are the ones who evangelize their 
our inmates. Uh, we have baptized 22 prisoners in one year. Uh, prison officials are very supportive because we are uh, involved in their social welfare and we have given a lot of resources to educate them and also uh, build them in Christ. It was great.